Well, hello and good afternoon. Welcome to another free online class. This is lesson number 44. My name is JC, and this is our channel, Learning English with JC. This is level B2, Upper Intermediate, and today we're going to have a review class, just as in the previous levels. Okay, so once again, this is a free online class. We are broadcasting from Madrid, Spain, from our academy, Montero Espinosa, for our channel, Learning English with JC. It's a pleasure for me to be here once again on this uh, 19th or 18th, 18th uh, June. 2020 already. Level B2, upper intermediate and review class lesson number 44. Okay, I'm going to make sure we have a good connection here as I do every day in every single class or level. And we do, we have a connection. Excellent. Very good. So let's get it started. Let's get it started. Remember that if you cannot watch uh, the classes live, uh, you can watch them later because all of them are recorded. Okay, according to each different level. But anyway, if you're here with me, welcome. Welcome to Learn English with JC. That will be me. Welcome once again, one more day. Remember, we broadcast Monday through Thursday, starting at 4 o'clock with level A1, followed by level B A2 at 4.30 or half past 4, and then B1 at 5 o'clock and B2 at 5.30 or half past 5. Okay, very good. So, what else? Don't forget to subscribe. We're very close to reaching the magic number of 3,000 subscribers in just four months, or a little bit less than four months. So that's pretty good, pretty good. So thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you so much, really. Uh, this is the Academy that sponsors this event, Montero Espinosa. That's where I work, and that's what I would like to see you in the future. Uh, having classes one-on-one, -on -one, okay, so we can see our faces. Okay, because right now you see me, but I don't see you, okay. So let's start with the date, okay. Today is Thursday, June 18th, 2020. That is the American version. Uh, British is... Today is Thursday, the 18th of June, 2020. Okay, one more time, American. Today is Thursday, June 18th, 2020. American British. Today is Thursday, the 18th of June, 2020. Hello, Mike. How are you? Welcome back, Mike. It's a pleasure to have you in all the classes. Uh, your English is going to improve very soon because you are making a huge effort. So thank you for your effort. Okay. Let's take a look at some prepositional phrases. These are not the same phrases that we had yesterday, okay? So these are different, okay? If you compare uh, yesterday's, yesterday's lesson with today's lesson, they are not exactly the same, okay? They are also prepositional phrases, but they are not the same, okay? So let's take a look at these ones. Uh, never tell tales out of school. Hmm. Perhaps they are already there by now. Please sit down for a while. She danced with abandon. She described the accident in detail. She has put her house up for sale. She's best, or she's the best by far. British would say by far. She went blind at the age of 10, unfortunately. She's on leave until the end of the month. Took an umbrella, just in case. The apple trees are in full bearing. And the last one, the army is on the move. Okay, so le just let me repeat the preposition of sentences once again. Out of school, by now, for a while, with abandon, in detail, for sale, by far or by far, at the age of, on leave, in case, in full, and finally, on the move. Okay, these are extremely common pre prepositional sentences that you hear all the time. Okay, if you watch uh, movies, TV series, or if you read books or talk to native speakers. Okay, very good. Now, uh, we're going to review phrasal verbs with the verb travel. Okay, we saw this uh, uh, this week, and I'm just going to read them, but I'm not going to read the meaning or the example. I'm just going to read them uh, the way they sound. Set off. Okay, top right hand corner. Set off. Hello, Pame, how are you? Pame is back with a cat. Okay, welcome to have you again. <laughs> so it's good to have you again. Welcome back. You're your cat. All right. So, set off, get in, hold up, take off, get off check out get on and hurry up okay 
Uh, Mike, I'm going to answer you in English. Uh, it depends on many factors. Many people ask me, um, uh, how long does it take to learn English? It depends on several factors. It depends on the age of the person. It depends on how much he or she studies per day. It depends on the background that person has uh, on the language, if he or she already knows a lot of things or just a few things. It depends on the teacher that you have. Uh, it depends on your talent as a person. Uh, some people are more talented than others. Some people need two hours and some other people need one hour to do the same thing. So it depends on a lot of factors. Um, of course, if you uh, connect to the classes every day, you're going to learn a lot of things. Hello, John. How are you? Uh, you're going to learn a lot of things in this, uh, in this class. So again, as I said before on the previous level, a, uh, B1, uh, I try to give you here some... Um, some general information about the language uh, in different levels. So, of course, if you um, connect every day in every single class, well, you're going to learn a lot. But you need to put that into practice. How do you put that into practice? By getting or finding an American or British girlfriend, for those of you who are men, or boyfriend, for those of you who are women, <laughs> by watching movies, by watching TV series, by reading, and by talking to uh, talk, talking to people in the chat, the, the chats that we have on the uh, in WhatsApp. So you need to do a lot of things, not just coming to class, which is good. Coming to class or connecting with me is excellent, of course, and I thank you for it. Uh, but it's not enough. You, again, the same example as I as I told you before. The more you play tennis, uh, the more you practice playing tennis, the better player uh, tennis player you become. So if you practice tennis one hour a day, it's not the same as if you practice tennis one hour a week. Huh? It's not the same. English, exactly the same. If you practice English one, two, or seven hours like uh, Esther does, of course your English improves a lot. Uh, it depends. Uh, it's up to you. It depends on how much practice, how much study uh, you do every day. So it depends on age, uh, teacher, etc. Et so but uh, the more you study, the more you learn. So that is obvious. The more you study, the more you learn. So yes, I suggest you connect to my classes and you write uh, wonderful sentences like the ones you do, like the ones you write. And uh, so uh, yeah, connect every day if you can. And then, um, in my opinion, one of the best ways to learn the pronunciation and to learn vocabulary is by watching documentaries. There are all sorts of documentaries. Uh, there are documentaries about uh, nature, about animals, about technology. <laughs> you name it, there are a lot of documentaries and uh, because they don't use a lot of uh, different or difficult expressions in those documentaries the speaker speaks normally with a good accent, uh, not too fast and that is an excellent way to learn I like documentaries from the History Channel, personally I like history and I like watching those I also like nature, but I prefer uh, history uh, history, uh, the History Channel has a lot. Uh, National Geographic has excellent documentaries as well. So there are a lot. There are a lot of things yeah, you can watch. Because watching movies and TV series, if you don't have a high level, it's really hard to understand sometimes. And it gets frustrating. It can be frustrating. It can be a frustrating experience. Because normally, it depends on the movie, but normally they use idiomatic expressions that are hard to understand. For instance, the other day I was watching the trilogy of Bad Boys with Mill Smith and Martin Lawrence. And man, pff, the way they talk. Pff. I mean, number one is not proper English. That's to begin. The movies are great. I love the three of them, especially the last one. Uh, but again, uh, the English they use, uh, I like these actors very much. But sometimes the grammar they use pff, is not the correct grammar. Right? Uh, I was watching a, a Spanish uh, actor in the movie, or number two. I'm not going to mention the name. And he said something in English, and the sentence was incorrect grammatically. So movies are not always the best uh, the best uh, way to learn. Uh, it depends on the movie, but they are not always the best uh, the best way to learn. Uh, songs, the same thing goes for songs. I ain't your mama. Uh, the expression I ain't is not entirely correct, uh, grammatically correct. It's, so yes, we love music and we love movies, but uh, they are not the best uh, the best uh, way to learn. TV series, uh, they are a little bit better to learn. Uh, again, depending on the TV series. But uh, I suggest when you're learning documentaries, the grammar is normally correct. You don't hear any strange things. You don't hear any uh, phrasal verbs, idiomatic expressions, strange expressions. No, that is the best way to learn. Once you know the language, 
then you can watch Bad Boys. And, and uh, uh, close your eyes, and uh, when they say something wrong grammatically, but uh, but the movies are good. <laughs> I love the movies. The three of them are great, great films. But the grammar, when they speak, is not the best. So I suggest <laughs> watch them later when your English is pretty good. Otherwise, <laughs> you're gonna be totally lost. Anyway, having said that, I know I hope I answered your uh, your your question, Mike. Uh, let me go forward with today's question. Again, this is my opinion. Again, uh, you don't have to agree with me. However, other English teachers share my opinion because I've talked to other English teachers and they share my opinion. But again, it's only my opinion and uh, everybody has a different opinion. So uh, what works for me, maybe it doesn't work for you. Everybody's different. Uh, we, are all di we have different talents, uh, different needs, different backgrounds. So... And nobody's always right. I'm not always right. It's only my opinion. It's only my opinion. So uh, feel free to do whatever you want. I give you uh, some solid advice, but maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Okay. So again, it's only my opinion, and I'm not always right. I'm not always right. Okay. So uh, here's a question: What are you good at? What are you good at? In my case, I am good at always being on time or punctual wherever I go okay and those who know me personally can testify of that <laughs> testify to that so I'm, I'm good I'm bad at other things but in this one I'm good I'm good at always being on time or punctual wherever I go now notice that being is in gerund why because it is following the preposition at uh, you have the adverb in between always but because you have the preposition at, the verb being is in gerund okay so I'm always good at being on time or punctual wherever I go. So Mike, Pami, uh, John, what are you good at? Uh, everybody's good at something, come on. What are you good at? Okay, John is good at eating between classes or during classes. <laughs> it's a joke, John. So John is good at eating uh, in my classes, eating uh, whatever he's eating. <laughs> okay, so what are you good at? Guys, come on, let me know. Let me know what you're good at. Okay, everybody's good at something. Okay, what are you good at? Okay, and I agree with you, John. You said well, you have to practice, practice, and practice after class. Yes, I agree. I just read your message, John. It's true. It's like, like I said, it's like tennis. Uh, hey, Esther, I'm good at sports and painting. Really? Okay, very good. Uh, what the sport are you good at? Specifically, Esther, can you tell us the sport you're good at? Uh, can you mention one? Uh, tennis, maybe? I don't know. Okay, I'm painting. Okay, we have a painter. Esther is a painter. Very interesting. I'm not good at painting. Is there a sport? Well, it depends on the sport. But at painting, I'm not good at painting. <laughs> but very good. <clears throat> so Esther, please let me know what sport you're good at. Esther, let me know. Just for curiosity. Okay, come on, John. Uh, come on, Pame, Mike. Let me know. Let me know. What are you guys good at? Pame, I'm good at always writing novels. Really? Wow, that's interesting. Okay, we have a painter and we have a writer. Interesting. Okay, very... Uh, very well-educated people, a painter and a writer. Wow, I'm impressed. Come on, John, what are you good at? And Mike, what are you guys good at? We have two women. One is good at painting. Oh, you're good at swimming. Wow, interesting. You're a good swimmer. Okay, interesting. Swimming is a very good sport, yeah. yeah because we move every single muscle in the body. Swimming is excellent, but you need a swimming pool <laughs> or, the, or the beach. That's the problem. I don't have a swimming pool here. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, Esther, swimming is great. John, I'm going to play the piano at church. Really? Wow, that's nice. It must be difficult, John. I heard that playing the piano is very difficult. Wow, how long have you been playing, John? At church. Wow, that's the best. That is the best place to play the piano at church. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, how long have you been playing, John? Just for curiosity. How long have you been playing? Uh, I've never played the piano. I think it's impossible for me. <laughs> it's very difficult. And uh, for that, probably, John, you need practice, practice, and practice. I take it, yeah. I had a friend also. I have, well, I have. I have a friend who is from Brazil. Uh, he also plays the piano as well. He told me he needed a million hours of practice. A million hours. So, wow, interesting. We have a painter. We have a writer. We have a swimmer, who is the same as the painter. And we have a piano player. Wow, interesting. Very, very interesting. Excellent, guys. Wow, I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of my students. Wow, interesting. Come on, Mike. What about you? Mike, are you thinking? Uh, so, John, let me know how many hours or how many, how long have you been playing? How long? Just for curiosity. How long have you been playing, John? The piano. 
Okay, let me go back. I mean, let me go forward. Phrase a verse with stand. I think we saw these ones yesterday. And I'm just going to read them, okay? While John tells me how many uh, how many years he's been playing the piano. Stand, uh, maybe John is eating again. Though, that's why he's not answering. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Uh, stand aside. Stand back. Stand by. Okay, Mike. I'm good at always trying to study English. Hey, very good. English capital letters, Mike. Don't forget. English capital letters, but that's good. I'm good at always trying to study English. A good sentence, very good sentence. Okay, so we have a good painter, a good swimmer, a good uh, writer, a good piano player, and a good student. All right, very good. So, stand aside, stand back, stand by, stand by again, stand for, stand in for, stand up, and stand out. Those are phrase of verse with the verb stand those are harder than the previous one are harder but some of them you can guess by the context okay john i'm still waiting for uh, for you to tell me how many years you've been playing the piano you are probably eating that's why your your mouth is full and you kind of <laughs> you're gonna write me anyway another movie trivia also concerning star wars and this one is not too hard this one is easier this one is easier than the previous level okay here it goes which of the three main heroes, Luke, Leia, okay, John, uh, 18 years, wow, 18 years, so, I've been playing the piano, no, John has, you have to say, I've been playing, this is the sentence, John, okay, because it's confusing, I go, I've been playing the piano for 18 years, oops, okay, so John, this is the correct sentence, I've been playing the piano for 18 years. So you need a four and you need the word, you don't need the word ego, okay? In one of these lessons next week probably, I will explain the difference between four, ego, and since. Because apparently it's very confusing for all my students. So John again, I've been playing the piano for 18 years. Man, that's a lot of years. Wow, you must be a great piano player. After 18 years, my God, wow, interesting. And again, the best place to play the piano is in church. I agree, that is the best place. Okay, to put your talent to the Lord. Excellent, excellent, yes. Okay, so, which of the, f <coughs> excuse me, which of the, thir of the three main heroes, Luke, Leia, and Han Solo, in the first the Star Wars trilogy, you're welcome, John, in the first Star Wars trilogy, refused, said, no way, refused to sign a three-picture deal. Remember when they, uh, when they uh, recorded the first one, they filmed the first one, the actors had to sign a contract because they were going to use them in uh, episodes 4, 5, and 6. Episode 4, uh, New Hope. Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. And episode 6, um, uh, The Return of the Jedi. So which of the three main heroes, Luke, Leia, and Han Solo, in the first Star Wars trilogy, refused to sign a three-picture deal? One of them said uh, initially said no. Of course, finally, that person said yes. But initially, that person said no. Uh, this one is easier because you have a 33.3% probability. So, <laughs> choose one. Okay, choose one. Luke, I'm your father. Uh, Leia uh, or Han Solo. Luke, Leia or Han Solo. Which one is the, uh, the one who initially refused? Later on, uh, conceded. But initially, that person refused to sign it. Okay. Anybody? Look, Leia or Han Solo, the main three heroes or characters in the movies, in the first three uh, mm -hmm. So, does anybody know? You have a 33.3% probability. Okay, nobody's answering, so I'm going to give you Luke. No, but it wasn't Luke. Han Solo is there. Yes, it was Han Solo. All right. Han Solo, let me read it for you. After freezing him in carbonite, in carbonite on the, in the second film, Hans, uh, Harrison Ford, Hans Solo, and the producers were not sure that he would return for a third movie, but he returned. So after freezing him in carbonite in the second film, Harrison Ford or Hans Solo, and the producers as well as the producers were not sure that he would return for a third movie, but he did. He did and. Uh, uh, he did a good job also in The Return of the Jedi. He did a very good job. A very good job. Okay, so uh, yeah. Han Solo was the one. 
And uh, my favorite film of all of them, as I told you in the previous uh, on the previous level, is uh, number four, uh, A New Hope. Which this uh, picture belongs to number four. Belongs to uh, movie number four, A New Hope. This uh, this image, this picture. They looked so young. I got the three of them. So so young. Carrie Fisher, unfortunately, uh, she passed away a couple of years ago or three. I don't remember. But unfortunately, she's no longer with us. Whereas Mark Hamill. And Harrison Ford is still with us. Uh, very good actors. I prefer Han Solo or, or uh, Harrison Ford. He's one of my favorite actors. Uh, but uh, yeah. So hmm. anyway, it was Han Solo. So it's there. You're right. It's there. Very good. Congratulations. Question number two. Okay. Now, what are you bad at? Hmm. The first question was, what are you good at? Now we have, what are you bad at? I'm bad at many things, but uh, here's my example. I'm really bad at playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine. Uh, I'm only uh, 164, so I am really bad at playing basketball. I'm really, really bad. <laughs> so, what are you bad at? What are you bad at? I'm really bad. JC is really bad at playing basketball. So, what are you bad at? Okay, let me read your answer. Everybody's bad at something. Come on. Uh, nobody's good at everything. So, unfortunately. So, what are you bad at? Okay. This is an easy answer. Come on, it's an easy answer. Everybody's bad at something. So, Mike, come on. John, Pame, Esther. Uh, who else is here? I don't know. Um, Esther, I'm really bad at cooking. Really, me too. <laughs> really, Esther, me too, me too. I'm really bad at cooking as well. All right. <laughs> well, now it is perfect, right? Now it is perfect. Okay, Pame. I'm really bad at playing soccer. Really? Me too. Yeah, I'm not going to play soccer either. All right. So we have a bad cook, uh, a bad uh, soccer player, a bad uh, basketball player. That's me. <laughs> Anybody else who is bad at uh, something else? Mike? Come on, Mike. John? Let me know. Uh, my, uh, John is bad at eating while I'm in class, while he's in class. He's bad at eating. <laughs> oh, boy. So anyway, we have, like I said, a bad cook, a bad soccer player, a bad basketball player and Mike let's see I'm really bad at swimming in oh really a bad swimmer on the sea on the sea see here on the sea but I'm a really bad uh, swimmer in the, sea, in the sea in the sea in you forgot the article there okay a bad swimmer a bad cook a bad player soccer player and a bad basketball player <laughs> okay John we're waiting for you what are you bad at come on John let us know please what is John bad at Okay, we'll see. We'll see what John is bad at. We're waiting for John. We're waiting for John before we move on. John doesn't want to share with us what he's bad at. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be shy, John. Come on, just let us know. Uh, we are bad at things, so everybody's bad at something. <laughs> so don't feel bad, John. Come on, let us know. Let us know. Okay, while John decides. I'm gonna go on with today's joke. I hope you like it. <laughs> we'll see. Little Johnny comes home from his first day at school and his mother asks, Hey, what did you learn today? Little Johnny. And Johnny replies, Not enough, Mom. I have to go back tomorrow. <laughs> so once again, little Johnny comes home from his first day at school and his mother says or asks, Hey, Johnny, what did you learn today? And Johnny, John, little Johnny says or replies, mm, not enough, mom. I have to go back tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's just a joke. You know. Okay. Oh, yeah, John, I knew you were going to say that. I'm, I'm really bad at eating in class. <laughs> okay, okay, very good, very good. Okay, so I hope you like the joke. Um, yeah, you need to go back tomorrow. <laughs> Today's inspirational sentence goes like this. So much of who we are is where we have been. Interesting. So much of who we are is where we have been. Esther liked the joke. Uh, Pame liked the joke as well. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. All right. So today's inspirational sentence goes like this. So much of who we are is where we have been. And I agree. I agree because based on our experiences, our personality is made. Okay, so uh, depending on uh, where we have been and what we have experienced, 
uh, changes our personality for the better, for the better or for the worse, for better or for worse. But uh, yeah, it's true. So, uh, so much of who we are is where we is where we have been. Okay, I wouldn't be able to be here today if I had not been living in America for so many years. Uh, if um, if God hadn't changed my character, I would not be here. So, uh, yeah, so much of who we are is where we have been. And I would add to where we have been to what uh, what we have experienced also. What we have experienced. I would add that to this uh, sentence. But that is my personal opinion. Okay. All right. So, I agree. It is true, says uh, Pame. Yeah, thank you, Pame. John says, I'm really bad at playing bas baseball. <laughs> finally, John, finally you tell us. <laughs> you finally tell us what you're bad at. Yeah, right. So you're bad at eating in class and you're bad at playing bas baseball. All right. I've never played baseball in my life, so I'm probably bad at it too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention. This is all for today. Have a great weekend. All right. Enjoy your time in church. If you go to church this weekend, uh, John, uh, enjoy your time playing the piano in church. I'm, I'm sure you're a wonderful player. And... Uh, yeah, lady of the film. Yeah, Mike, it's true. And I'll uh, see you again next week. Do not forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, please. Uh, hopefully, on Monday, I will tell you, hey, we reached the 3,000 number. I hope so. It's going to be close. It's going to be close between now and Monday. And uh, I'll be back on Monday. This is the last uh, class for today. After four classes, I can't talk anymore. My so I have a sore throat. But I'll survive. I'll survive. So thank you very much. I'll see you uh, next week. And be good, okay? Be good. God bless you all, okay? God bless you all. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for, for being here. Bye.